Welcome to India. Welcome back, I would say. Thank you. And, yeah, Thank you. and it's your first trip, I guess. So welcome to India, and many congratulations. The show looks spectacular. Thank you. So I'll Thank start you. with Daddy, since, yes. and then to the kids who have some serious Daddy issues <laughs> with you. But Lord, honestly, you know, you are the true. 38th great grandfather of you know our God. So what was that? You know, I'm dying to meet my grandson. <laughs> Vigo Mortensen, yeah, um, a, quite a responsibility actually, yes. because what uh, what you what you learn more and more is how how deeply in their hearts that the, the Tolkien fans feel about Elendil, yeah. because he's a sort of hero archetype, particularly because of his self-sacrifice at the end when he's when he's uh, battling Sauron. Um, so so it's been this responsibility and excitement because Tolkien's only written these these little signposts along the way of who he is and. Yeah. and I get, I get this opportunity to fill him out and, and round him off as a, as a three-dimensional human being. And apparently he now sounds like me, so that's quite exciting. <laughs> With a dark, booming voice. The chocolatey voice. Yeah. <laughs> and your character, Isidore, everyone's waiting in anticipation because, you know, it's his journey too. And fans are very excited to see, because, you know, the fandom is crazy, to see how he pans out. So is that making you a little anxious and overwhelmed? Yeah. He's got daddy issues in season one, so I guess. Unfair. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he's, he's, there's, there's an emptiness in him, actually, in, yeah. in the first season that was interesting to play. Um, because there's kind of a journey there, because you start off kind of broken and you try, and you try throughout the season to, to become ho more whole. Um, and yeah, I, f I found out that he's, he's also quite funny. <laughs> so I'm kind of building him from the, from the ground up. We know where he kind of ends up, but what, where does he start? And I found out that he's really funny. And he kind of make, makes a lot of mistakes, but not kind of intentionally. Um, so that was kind of interesting playing there. Yeah. And there's the girl who is quite averse to taking risks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You've done your research. Risk yeah. <laughs> and she is, and you are a new character here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they at least had source material to find their way around. Yeah. You didn't have that blueprint. So I didn't. And that's kind of liberating too, isn't that? Yes. It's a double-edged sword because then yeah. there's also a bit of like, oh, does that addition make sense? Um, but yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm very happy with the, the depth in the character that JD and Patrick wrote. Uh, she's got her own goals and ambitions and, um, and tension within her. She's not just there to be the girl. Um, I had a wonderful time playing her. So. Awesome. It's interesting yeah. because well, the daddy issues is, is true, isn't it, in, in, in the sense? But but what they've what JD and Patrick have written is is a family that is undergoing the the grief from the loss of their mother, yeah. all of those sort of things, and just how, in a Tolkienian way, it's it's just like every other family that's got got its problems, sure. and how those effects change people's direction in life. I think it's um, they've set them up very very well at the beginning. So the Middle Earth is not something that has been discussed in the cinematic universe. And he's also written, you know, and you do find mentions in the appendix and, you know, in the other works. Mm. So what was it like for, to find your way around this universe? What was that like? Well, you know, I read the books when I was a kid, watched the movies and stuff, but then, then you realize there's this whole treasure trove of how, how much Tolkien had written, yeah. how much he'd created. So you can, you can dive into, into his world and try and, from that, pick out the pieces that are going to work True. for us in, in, in Numenor, being you know, thousands of years before the Third Age. So it's such a rich history, and, it's, and it seems seemingly unending because so many people have written about it and interpreted True. it in different ways, so it's been exciting. I mean, it also helps that when we walked on set, they built a humongous city yes. that just transported us directly to Numenor. So they helped us kind of uh, set the, the foundations for the world that we, that yeah, we were we bringing. Didn't, we didn't have to imagine the beauty of that society. Mm. Yeah. A lot because, yeah, we didn't use any green screen. Everything well, was built. Almost none. Mm. Yeah. Almost That's none, apart from the sea of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. extraordinary. Awesome. And then also the, the geography of New Zealand at one point, I did a scene with Morvedh, who plays Galadriel, and we're on the beach riding our horses. And it was the first day we realized we'd established the physical geography of Numenor. Very exciting. So what would the three of you do if you got the, ring of, the rings of power in this day and age? What would you do? The one I'm thing that so glad you asked that question. <laughs> I feel, you know, and this is a question that we haven't answered and we probably will, but, you know, is there something inherently bad about Isidore that he doesn't throw the ring in? If Elendil had held the ring, would he throw it in? I don't, I don't know the answer to that, but I feel that Tolkien would say, whoever holds it, it's unknown as to whether they would... They're most likely, if they're fallible, human, fallible elf, to do something 
that they wouldn't want to have done in any of their circumstances. And you have to remember, Frodo had to have his finger bitten off in order <laughs> to let it go. So sure. that's my answer. So before I go, I just want to ask the three of you, if you got that ring of power, the one thing you would do with that ring? Um, well, I like, I like, I'd like to be invisible and go places. So I know, why is that? Everyone from your set is saying that we want to be invisible. Because it's, <laughs> it's, so, it's so cheeky. <laughs> you know, you can be cheeky. Um, I, I've been saying kind of a truth ring. I'd like to be able to put it on and, and get someone's honest thoughts on something. Mm, painful, potentially. Pain, yeah. <laughs> mm, I'd like to go back, back, in, back in time, so choose where I could go back in history That'd and who I, would, who I could meet. That would to the be Romans? Great. Oh, all sorts of places, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, since he's already done our film and one of our actors today invited you to our industry, any plans? Since he's already been to Bollywood, what about you now? I will take my daddy's leave and I will go to Bollywood. <laughs> uh, no, I would, I would love to go to Bollywood, yeah. I am in Bollywood. Are you're, you're in Mumbai. You are in Mumbai, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Anyways, and uh, thank you very much, all the very best, and you're all waiting to watch it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Lovely question.